this is something that I struggled with in my own life uh, years ago. And, um, you know, because of my poor eating habits and my stress, I got, you know, uh, about 25, 30 pounds overweight. Um, and, and I'm, I'm a small guy, um, you know, and, uh, tip, uh, traditionally have been, uh, but, uh, put on 25, 30 extra pounds, that's not good. And, um, and that's what happened uh, to me. But, um, uh, I, I, I was doing all the crazy diet fad stuff that everybody else was doing back in the day. I jumped on the fat free bandwagon, uh, thought that was, uh, because of what was being taught about it and it was being taught to all the medical professionals hey you need to everybody needs to cut the fat cut the fat which was totally wrong and um you know it's been disproven but this unfortunately there's still some people out there that are, that are still following that plan you know 30 years later uh but um it, it's it's not the right way to go for anybody we need good healthy fats uh, in our diet we need to avoid the bad fats of course but this this program was saying to avoid all fat, which is not good, not 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 right. Uh, our system, our body has to have the good fat. Um, and um, but anyway, uh, what I learned uh, at some point after going through that fat free phase where I lost a little weight, and gained it all back and more. Um, and that all, that's often what happens to people when they do these fad diets. And that's why I'm not a fan of diets. I don't promote diets, uh, I promote a nutrition plan. So what I learned uh, back in the day was a, a, a particular nutrition plan. It was uh, it was actually a particular diet back then, but I have I modified it. I changed it uh, and I call it uh, balanced nutrition. And that's what I teach my clients is balanced nutrition, uh, getting a, a good balance of the macronutrients every time you eat. And those macronutrients uh, are protein, carbohydrates, and fat. And that's our macronutrients. Uh, and those macronutrients, if you're getting good, healthy ones, they're going to provide you with the micronutrients that you need, all the vitamins and minerals uh, that are that are considered micronutrients. Uh, so uh, that's what I teach people, and it's um, it's uh, kind of a modification of um, what Dr. Barry Sears. Uh, developed years ago called the zone diet, uh, which was extremely hard to follow and uh, very cumbersome in trying to keep up with everything in, the, in, a, in that program. But it's a very uh, healthy way to eat. And Dr. Sears program was designed to control blood sugar, basically, to keep the blood sugar stabilized. And um, and that's, uh, in my opinion, in the opinion of many other health practitioners and, and scientists, uh, for longevity, that's you can't do anything better for yourself as far as for longevity than to keep that blood sugar stabilized. And, and you know, as well as, uh, <laughs> as the rest of the world knows, uh, you know, uh, we don't have a pandemic. We have an epidemic of diabetes in and in the world. But but more so the United States because of this what, what's called the sad diet or the standard American diet that uh, that so many people are following, uh, which uh, is driving blood sugar levels up continually, causing people to develop insulin resistance, and therefore that uh, progresses into diabetes. Uh, if insulin resistance is not controlled, they develop prediabetes and they develop di diabetes. And so it, it's epidemic proportions. Um, it, it's unbelievable the numbers when you look at the statistics on uh, uh, diabetes and prediabetes uh, in, in the uh, in the United States. Uh, it, it's, it's it's horrible. But anyway, this nutrition plan helps keep that blood sugar stabilized. Um, I was listening to. Um, I think you'll find this interesting, Dr. Michael Rosen. Uh, the other day, who is the uh, director of wellness for uh, a Cleveland uh, Clinic uh, in Cleveland, Ohio, a very famous uh, research clinic. Uh, uh, Dr. Rosen uh, was talking about this very thing that keeping the uh, blood sugar stabilized is one of the keys to longevity. And so that's what my nutrition plan does. It helps keep that blood sugar uh, uh, stabilized where you're not getting spikes and then drops, spikes and drops. Um, and that, that was one of the things that was happening to me years ago before I discovered this plan. 
that was I was on that sugar roller coaster, and uh, I would get episodes of hypoglyc what they call hypoglycemia, where the blood sugar would drop too low, and um, I hurt a lot of people's feelings when that happened because <laughs> I I would get hangry, uh, and uh, uh, and you know not even realizing what was going on, uh, but that's what happens to so many people. Uh, that are following uh, the wrong kind of uh, diet or nutrition plan. Uh, but that's uh, that's what I teach, and I, I love it. I love seeing the results that people get from it as far as weight loss, getting their blood sugar under control, getting off of medications, uh, getting their cholesterol under control, because that's another thing, too. And that's one of the things that drives cholesterol numbers up is, uh, is, is sugar and uh, blood sugar, uh, high insulin levels. I do think that's one area, and I don't want to necessarily cover COVID too much here, but I think that's one area that maybe hasn't been talked about enough is uh, nutrition, especially in Western culture, uh, the the lack of nutrition, the, the poor eating habits that we have, and how it's leading to so many different chronic illnesses. Um, and I just wish we would have maybe looked at that a little bit closer for all of us to take more accountability on our our eating habits and and take more of that proactive approach um but that's i guess a side tangent for another day <laughs> oh yeah yeah well I, I will i will mention something uh add to that just briefly i was in the room on clubhouse uh, uh saturday with a uh an icu physician uh from canada and he uh, uh he alluded to what you just uh, mentioned is that uh when they were uh all the COVID cases that were coming in initially, they, that's one of the things that uh, they saw in common with most of the patients is that they were obese, they were out of shape, they were unhealthy to start with. And, um, and, and he said, uh, he said, actually, one of his, uh, 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 you know, cohorts in, uh, in the hospital there, uh, another physician that he worked with, uh, observed that as well. And he's, he was one of those people that was you know, unhealthy, out of shape. He said uh, he lost 30 something pounds uh, right away uh, because he saw what was happening. I may have been in that same room on, on Saturday with you because that sounds very familiar. Um, I think what people don't realize too is that, you know, when we do get out of COVID here, it's not like that's going to be the last pandemic that we ever face. You know, there's likely going to be another one or, or several in the hundreds of years, you know, to, to come here. And to your point about being in an epidemic of, of high diabetes rates and, and all kinds of other chronic illnesses, I think hopefully this is a good wake up call for people to realize we have to take matters into our own hands and start living healthier rather than relying on, on the system of whatever, may, whatever system that may be. Absolutely. Well, that's, that's, uh, that's what I preach and teach all the time. That's why I wrote the, uh, uh, the book, How to Live Until You Die, uh, The Seven Keys to Living Happy, Healthy, and Whole, is to encourage people to be, be proactive with their health, to start you know, uh, uh, down that path and, uh, and continue down that path uh, of, of living a, a healthy life and making their, uh, you know, changing their lifestyle, their lifestyle habits. And, um, and that's, um, you know, that's something that, um, I talk to people about all the time is, is being proactive. And, uh, you know, one interesting, uh, thing in relation to that is that, um, uh, there have been some studies done in your neck of the woods up there at Northwestern university. Uh, a few years ago, there was a long-term study done as they followed these people for years, um, to, um, uh, with their lifestyle, their diet and their lifestyle. Uh, to see if it would have any effects on their genetic profile, and their genetic makeup. And, uh, and bottom line, uh, a conclusion of the study showed that, yes, lifestyle trumps genetics. And so uh, you know, I tell people that all the time because people tell me, oh, my grandma got diabetes. I'm going to have diabetes or my grandfather died of a heart attack. I guess I'm, I'm probably going to have heart disease, too. And I said, no, you don't have to. I said, you can prevent that. You can t start living a life now, change your lifestyle, you live healthy, take care of yourself, and, and uh, you don't have to go down that path uh, that they went down. 